Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Charlie and I'm a cardiology resident from the Medical University of Warsaw. On this channel I will do my best to provide doctors insight on the new and not so new tech gadgets with a medical twist. Every video will be divided into three parts. An introduction of the actual device and its medical potential, followed by two sets of impressions. One dedicated for fellow MDs and the other one for civilians. The first video will focus on the ECG app of the Apple Watch. Ever since its introduction and approval by the FDA, the ECG function of the Apple Watch was basically mentioned in every possible news. However, the ECG itself is a technique from the 19th century and it serves as one of the most basic and also one of the most important tools in cardiology. The tracings produced by the ECG machine reflect the electric potential generated by the heart chambers. When done, with a dedicated machine and assessed properly, it can not only help detect arrhythmias, but also myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism, other cardiac disorders, but also conditions that are strictly not cardiac related, such as hypothermia or intracranial bleeding. Yet Apple emphasizes that its ECG app cannot be used to detect most of these conditions. This is due to the fact that ECG done with the Apple Watch only provides you information from one lead from the 12 leads available in the classic ECG. Fortunately, even information available from the one lead that we have in the ECG app can help us put forward a diagnosis of a possible arrhythmia. What is more, performing an ECG with the Apple Watch is much simpler than with a classic ECG device. All you have to do is make sure that your watch is firmly pressed against your wrist, put your finger on the crown, and wait for 30 seconds. The tracing will be saved in a PDF file and will be immediately ready for your MD to see. And most importantly, despite all those limitations as compared to a classic ECG device, the FDA approved and validated the Apple Watch to help detect atrial fibrillation. And detecting atrial fibrillation or AFib is incredibly important. AF is one of the most common arrhythmias in the adult population and at the same time it's one of the most dangerous ones. This is due to the fact that in addition to causing your heart to beat irregularly, uh, which can cause dizziness, uh, chest pains, uh, discomfort on its own, its most grim consequence is stroke. How does AF cause stroke? Well, the answer is twofold. Uh, first, it causes the blood to stay too long in the fibrillating atria and ignites inflammatory process in the atria walls, both of which promote clot formation. And when a clot forms in the left atrium, one of the many places it can go next is brain, causing a thromboembolic stroke, which to make things worse is usually more debilitating than a normal atherosclerotic stroke. That said, let's dig in into the question how the Apple Watch can actually be of use for my fellow MDs. Oh. I became a doctor for the same four reasons everybody does. Chicks, money, power, and chicks. The ECG app on the Apple Watch has definitely caused a lot of hype. But is it actually something that you can use in your everyday life? Well, as usually in medicine, yes and no. You can definitely check whether the palpitations you've been having after a 10th shift this month is just some supraventricular extrasystoles, or is it actually a new onset to atrial fibrillation. But can you use it on a patient? Well, once again, yes and no. Technically, yes, you can. Just remember to use the same hand that you have set in your ECG app settings or change it there. And remember that you will only obtain lead one. Furthermore, do keep it disinfected before and after use. But can you use the watch to establish an AFib diagnosis? Officially, no. Apple emphasizes that the ECG produced by the ECG app is not intended for clinical use or as the basis for diagnosis or treatment. So is the watch at least helpful or accurate in terms of arrhythmia detection? In a study published in February 2020 in circulation, the authors compared 292 ECG readings from the watch with the tracing from heart monitors. The watch correctly identified and notified of 34 out of 90 AFib episodes, yielding a sensitivity of 41%. When the PDF files with watch's recordings were presented to a MD, AFib was correctly identified in 96% of cases. 
Anthony Pearson, aka the Skeptical Cardiologist, has done some in-depth comparisons of the ECG app with another device, namely Carnia Mobile. He has reported that in many cases the watch's tracings were illegible or even misleading. One tracing showed artifacts that resembled ventricular tachycardia, despite the fact that on the other device the ECG was completely normal. Given how gimmicky and potentially misleading the tracings of the Apple Watch ECG app can be, I definitely advise against using it as a decision-making basis, especially if there is an abundance of heart monitors That's the machine that goes bing! piling in the corridor and just waiting to be used. If, however, all the monitors are currently in use, or your ward doesn't have any, and your patient is currently experiencing some heart palpitations, then it might actually be beneficial to put the watch around his wrist and obtain a tracing. Another scenario in which the watch could potentially be helpful is an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. In those situations, every second matters and the resources are usually limited. The most important part of every out-of-hospital cardiac arrest is basic life support consisting of uh, rescue breaths and chest compressions. If, however, there were enough people on the scene to ensure that the airways, the breathing and the circulation curve is being properly provided, I could imagine myself putting a wrist on patient's hand in order to check the rhythm. Still, however, I would not change my management and I would continue basic life support until the arrival of paramedics. The next situation in which the watch could come in handy is a flight. Imagine hearing those six terrifying words. Is there a doctor on board? Even though the plane's first aid kits are very well equipped, they rarely contain a heart monitor. In a rare case, a patient required medical assistance due to heart palpitation, I could imagine myself again putting my Apple Watch on the patient's wrist in order to obtain a tracing. But still, in case the symptoms were severe or worsening over time, I would not hesitate to advise an early landing and further diagnostics. Finally, the last scenario in which the watch could potentially prove helpful is an out-of-the-hospital afternoon or evening with friends, just chillaxing over a barbecue, when suddenly one of your friends asks you for uh, the palpitations they are having at the moment. I had a couple of cases like this in the recent past, and the Apple Watch tracings were consistent with either AFib in one case or supraventricular extrasystoles in the other. But do keep in mind to always verify the watch's tracings uh, with further diagnostics, such as 24-hour ECG monitoring or other tests if needed. What about heart attack? Can you use the Apple Watch ECG app to detect myocardial ischemia? The short answer is no. The long answer is no. Apple emphasizes that the device cannot detect myocardial infarction and that if you ever experience symptoms or signs of a potential heart attack, you should call emergency services. In April 2020, a case report was published in European Heart Journal describing a case of myocardial ischemia documented on the Apple Watch tracing done during chest pain episode. Further diagnostics led to performing coronary angiogram and confirming significant narrowing of one of the coronary arteries. This case, however, has to be treated as an interesting anecdote, not as a proof that the watch can detect myocardial ischemia on a regular basis. So, to sum up, have I ever used the watch on a patient in a hospital? No, I haven't. Do I imagine using the watch uh, if nothing else was available? I do. Similarly, in those situations where the resources are scarce, on board or during an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, but even then, I would be extremely hesitant and extremely cautious to base any decisions solely on the tracings obtained from the Apple Watch. Well, that's been it, folks. If you have any other potential uses for the ECG app on the Apple Watch, let me know in the comments. And now, a quick message from the channel sponsor. Nah, I'm just kidding. Nobody's sponsoring this. A quick message from me. So this channel is in no way intended to replace an actual medical consult. If ever in doubt about your health, do not hesitate to contact your primary care physician or specialist. Do keep in mind, though, that the majority of diseases that are present in our lives are mostly lifestyle related. And in terms of lifestyle modification from the cardiological point of view, it's actually very simple. You just have to remember about your five S's. Don't smoke, keep your blood cholesterol, your blood pressure, and your blood sugar within the norm, and exercise to avoid obesity. So, thank you very much for watching, and well, since this has been my first video, I cannot finish differently than by saying, if you liked it, hit that subscribe button, 
and see you in the next one.